Welcome to this week's episode of Coffee with a Journalist, brought to you by One Pitch. The guests on our show include some of the most notable journalists from the top U.S.-based publications who cover topics including technology, lifestyle and culture, health, science, consumer products, business news, and beauty and wellness. We discuss their role, the types of stories they cover, what their inbox looks like, and how they connect with sources. Head to onepitch.co and look for the video page to learn more about our new video series featuring today's guest. Today, we're joined by Ryan Barwick, a reporter for Morning Brew. Ryan specifically covers media, advertising, and technology for the Marketing Brew newsletter. Prior to joining Morning Brew, Ryan was a reporter for Adweek and was a broadcast associate for CBS News. During the episode, Ryan tells us about clean room technology, ways he builds relationships with sources, his favorite writer and current read, and more. Let's hear from Ryan now. Hey everyone, this is Coffee with a Journalist, a podcast where we welcome and bring on journalists who give us insights into pitches, how they don't like pitches, what's in their inbox, what's happened with the future of journalism, all this good stuff so we can get better with our relationships with journalists. I'm Beck Bamberger. I have an agency named BAM that works with all venture-backed technology companies. And I also started One Pitch, which is to help publicists such as myself get better relationships and better pitches to the journalists we talk to and hopefully have good relationships with to do our day-to-day job. With us today, we have Ryan Barwick. He's a reporter for Morning Brew based in Brooklyn, New York City, my favorite, favorite spot. I'm not there now because it's January and it's freaking cold, Ryan. But thank you for being here. We're excited to chat with you today. Thank you so much for your time. Brooklyn yeah. misses you, and I miss uh, San Diego. Uh, yes, yes. It's lovely here. Man, I got to say, real quick before we hop into what's going on in your inbox, can you give us an overview of Marketing Brew and what the best pitch is overall for the outlet is? Yeah, sure. So Marketing Brew is a newsletter. We were going three times a week. It is now five times a week. Mm-hmm. That's there a was lot. one reporter, then there was two reporters, and now there's five of us. On the team, we cover a little bit of everything. I primarily cover like media and technology, talking with media Mm -hmm. buyers and with all, you know, ad tech and all the intricacies of kind of the industry. But we cover everything from brand marketing to technology to the Super Bowl to whatever the hell's going on in like the crypto NFT space. So it's super broad. Mm. Uh, I think we tried to bring a, a pretty fun voice and an explanatory voice to what we're covering. Yeah. So that's also something is explaining what the impact of X is, what it means for a market, what it means for advertisers and so forth. So contextualizing. Yeah, exactly. I think the, the best success I've had so far is I'll write an explainer on something as complex as like clean room technology, which is this kind of like emerging technology. Huh? I've gotten a ton of feedback from people just saying, wow, that was confusing as hell. But, you know, you put a couple jokes in there and you made it make sense. That wait, you know, kind of what we're striving for. And wait a second. Wait a second. Tell us what is this clean room? A clean room is like a data platform. Okay, this is where people are going to stop paying attention. <laughs> Stay with us, everyone. Stay with us. I'm looking. So basically, if you're, you know, Go Ryan's ahead. brand or Ryan's yes. company and Beck's company, uh-huh. we can take our data and put it into a clean room. You know, like a digital uh-huh. platform, and then we can, you know, share that information, you know, privately and securely. It is super complex and super weedy. And I did not study computer science. So I had to interview like 15 people to explain this very complex thing to me. But I think like to my point, like we've had a lot of success with these kind of stories where you take a very confusing yeah. topic, like data and ad tech and then you write it in a, you know, I tr- try to write it in English, which I don't think mm-hmm. the industry does a very good job of. That's true. That is, I think MarTech is a bit scary. That's quite different. And I saw you wrote a piece on clean rooms back in November. Very different than your wine and Oreo piece that was later in December. So you cover quite the spectrum, right? Yeah, as we see. I yeah. think that is more of a product of, you know, the newsletter goes out three to five times a week. And we, yeah. we try to do three stories in every newsletter. So I think you know, all of us are doing about one to two, just kind of short stories to contextualize the news, you know, mm-hmm. when, when it's actually happening or point something. That's one of the best parts about a newsletter is that we can actually have fun with it. And like, oh, here's this really silly personality. 
Yeah. It usually takes 20 minutes to write something like that. Like that was not mm -hmm. a, a major investment of my time. But yeah, I think it's worthwhile to our readers to actually like point out some funky stuff that's happening throughout the industry. I agree with that. And it's so much more. And I think gives the value of the outlet and also the journalists to give that context and give the view, especially if it's delineated as, hey, this is our viewpoint on it and our analysis on it. That's way different than a headline you read in the BBC. And it's just what it is. And you're like, oh, well, what does this mean? So, yeah, I that. mean, yeah, we try to like, and I think if you read this story, you know, you have fun with it. We're very lucky with the morning brood voices. You know, we try to cram as many jokes in our stories as it possible. It is fun. It is yeah. fun. That's great. Ryan, how is your inbox? My inbox right now, I have two unread emails because I'm saving them for this afternoon because they pertain to a story. But okay. otherwise, I am very militant on reading or at least opening every email in my inbox. Oh, wow. Okay. You're way on the other side of the spectrum. So every email you're going to open. Every email. Now, granted, usually I can see it like, I mean. The first couple lines. People with NPR know, like, if I see that, like, this email was written as a template and it didn't come from a company that I, like, it didn't come from the PR yeah. from companies I hire, then, like, after four years of doing this, my eyes just instantly glaze over and I know how to, how to move on mm -hmm. to the next thing. So, yeah, if I see a template, I'm opening that bad boy and I'm probably not going back in there. Mm. Got you. And then, so you go to zero? Is zero oh, I, yes. like every day? Every, zero, hour? every day. Now, my personal inbox is. Not, oh, wow. There's only like 5% I, of you out there I, you I know, that a, are like yeah, this. Yeah, but it's I have amazing. my email open like literally all day. I am constantly, I think I sent, I just told my editor to this. I believe I sent like 65 emails yesterday, which I'm not proud of. And hopefully that'll carry me through for the next couple of weeks. But yeah, no, I'm constantly <laughs> in the inbox. Yeah, it's very, and even newsletters. I'm reading newsletters, wow. I'm opening them, I'm, I'm checking what's going on. But uh, yeah, always zero. Wow, you're in your own bracket. I wonder if there's like, you guys all hang out maybe like once a year as a journalist fair and like, are like, hey, here's the inbox zero people. Like, how do you learn? It's just, it's fascinating how the spectrum is so large on the let it roll group and then the <laughs> yeah. militant, militant, absolute zero of which are rare. Yes. I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. I don't think this is the best way to do it, but it's the best way that works for me. Hey, then that's good. It works for you. That's what it's about. So given you read every email, does the subject line then at all matter? That's a great question. Not really. Yeah. And I often find that like a lot of emails that I get with the subject line that say exclusive I tend to think that that's usually not that relevant it's to me. Okay. Exclusive to me is a story that I'm breaking myself, that I'm doing the reporting on, like a scoop. If I'm getting an exclusive through, uh, oh. you know, our agency, it's usually, you know, I, I, I like to do that up. reporting on. Yeah, I, I like to do that reporting on my terms. You know, every once in a while, something will come through. Someone I, if I have a relationship with a specific company, something mm -hmm. will happen. But if I don't know you and it says exclusive in the subject line, my eyes are going to roll pretty hard. However, mm -hmm. I will probably still read it. I just, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to think too hard about it. Hmm. That's also rare. I think I've heard because some people have their whole thing on embargoes and exclusives and how much time you give me for an exclusive. But you have the interesting answer of, no, it has to be an exclusive that I do, that I'm breaking yeah, I like a scoop. Wow. Okay. I'm, so don't I'm pitch you an exclusive. Fortunate. Well, if I have a relationship with you, and if you want to have a relationship with me, my you know, find me on Twitter. I will talk to literally as many people as possible. That's the best part of reporting. I yes. love reporting and I love meeting new people. However, like I'm very fortunate at Morning Brew, where I don't really, and maybe this is unique to my beat, but I don't really write stories on pitches, but. I will find people to talk to on pitches. Like if I'm writing a story about, you know, people needing to, you know, go back in the office and I get an email from an agency, a creative agency, and they say, oh, you know, we're putting out a press release because we're changing our policy. Well, okay, that's like super natural. Like hmm. I, I want to talk to that person. So I find sources to talk to, but rarely do I find stories from pitches, I guess. Does hmm. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good distinction too. 
that is rarely kind of heard, I would say, for here. Today's interview will continue after this brief message brought to you by OnePitch. Are you curious to see the unique ways OnePitch helps PR professionals and marketers pitch journalists? Head to OnePitch.co to learn about our new OnePitch score and see how easy it is to find the right journalist to pitch your news to. Sign up for your free account today. Now, back to today's episode. So for stories then, you do, and there's quite a lot that you pump out with the newsletter every day. So you, as I mentioned, there's you know Oreo and wine as the latest collaboration. There's something here on the CTA recap. You have Twitter follows, you know, to look at McDonald's, what they're doing with BTS. That's yeah. another. Granted, thing. it was also like the end of the year. Too. Also so that, to also that, you know, how do you then come up with, Ooh, I really want to get into that long form story or like go deep into that piece. Yeah. Something I kind of pay attention to or like, tools the industry is using like i've written Hmm. multiple stories about okay there's this new technology that a company is selling or that the industry is beginning to adopt and there are different versions of this whether that is a clean room technology or i did a story about these companies that they create lists of publishers for brands so if i'm ryan's you know brand and i don't want to be on these sites Mm -hmm. there's a company that kind of comes in they're called brand safety companies that kind of come Mm -hmm. in and and do that work so i like to pick like this is something we talk a lot about something that's very narrow story that also goes very deep those stories are really exciting to me and those are the ones that like you know because it's a newsletter there's a lot of other stuff i write that's i write pretty quickly but those are the stories that I'm actually like proud of and are actually indicative of the beat that I'm working on. Mm-hmm. And again, because you read every single email in the last maybe a year in 2021, did anything this long in depth ever come from a pitch? Yes, yeah? actually. Ooh, give us an example. Give us an example. I wrote a story about these companies that were selling artificial intelligence, like writing tools. And I can pull up the story. Ooh now okay i'm looking at your list too okay one's called copy ai that was one of them okay basically these robots these tools that companies were creating to write tweets to write content to write instagram captions so basically these companies don't or agencies don't really have to lean on copywriters anymore Mm. Hmm. and this is something that like i feel like it's a technology that kind of existed yeah i thought yeah right Yeah. And then when I got a pitch of one of them, I was like, you know what? I've heard of this. I want to talk to you. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I don't remember what their specific email was, Mm -hmm. but it was basically like, we are an artificial intelligence copywriting machine. So when you get something like that, it's like, okay, I'm curious about that. And then it turns out there are several of them. So I talked to all the companies and wrote it out. And it was really interesting. But again, it was based on a specific tool that the industry was starting to adopt. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that did convert to one of these pieces. It did, okay. yeah. And what do you think? But they were not the only company I spoke with. Yes, too. of course. Because usually, I know some people have told us on this podcast that they use pitches as kind of a, a little signal symbol where, oh, wait, I'm getting five pitches this week on X. Hmm, maybe there's something going on with X, even though I otherwise wasn't going to do anything if I just saw one pitch, you know? So sometimes it's a trend piece that you kind of then go, mm-hmm. oh, wait a yeah. second. Hmm, something's going on. Okay. If you can put your client within the context of a trend that is not like super obvious, like, yeah, hey, we have something to talk about the Super Bowl or something, like, actually, like, hey, like, investments are being made here, here, and here. Here's an example of this. Talk to my client. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that will raise an eyebrow. Mm, okay. We talked on exclusives, Ryan, for just a, a quick second. And we know you want to do your own exclusives, as in a scoop. Do you ever do anything with embargoes, or what's your preference with those? Yeah, I generally like, you know, first of all, please do not send an email with the entire press release and then at the bottom say, it's this is embargoed until Friday. <laughs> that's not how it works. And granted, we're not. I'm not going to write a story on that anyway, but that's not how it works. And if you're working in PR, you know better. You're all very smart people. But as far as, yeah, embargoes, I'll say, hey, you know, we have an embargo. Can you agree to it? Yes, I will always say yes, because I'm very curious what's on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. And we respect embargoes. 
previously our newsletter only went out three times a week. So mm. it could be a little dicey to be like, oh, okay, well, we don't have a newsletter. You know, it'll come out on Friday, not Thursday. Now we're five times a week. So that's less of a mm -hmm. concern. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because you're coming out Yeah, I accept and respect embargoes. Excellent. And it's always funny when embargoes lift and 10 writers all wrote the same story. That's always fun. Yeah. Does that piss you off? No. no. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just kind of a nature of the yeah. business. I would hope that each, you know, 10 reporter has their own unique spin on something. Mm -hmm. I will say I'm not that original and creative, but I think Morning Brew is, you know, we get the flexibility to have fun. So... I would hope, you know, obviously the reporters at the Associated Press are complete That's badasses. That's very different. Yes. But I would hope Morning Brew, you know, voice is, <laughs> is exciting different. enough. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ryan, are you reading, listening to, streaming, frankly, anything we'll take as we get all our ideas from here? Any stories that you're loving right now that we can also love and explore? Any stories that I'm loving that I can yeah, explore? Yeah, books, Netflix. Broadway show. Oh, you don't care what you got. I'm watching this show called, and I can't get any of my friends to watch Ooh, it. What is it? But it's called South Side. Wait, it's called it's on South HBO. Side. HBO Max. Oh, I love everything. From yeah, HBO. no one knows about this. South it, Side. it was one of the funniest shows I've seen all year, but it's a comedy. It's not like, you know, it's not a <sighs> deep dive investigative story. But sometimes it you is need so a break, though. I love some of this. It is so freaking funny. It's about South Side of Chicago, and it's oh, is absolutely hilarious. I uh, love it. Okay, I'm adding it to my HBO list right now. Okay, perfect. What else you got? Anything else? I just read this book by Jay Caspian Kang. Okay. It's called The Loneliest Americans. I think oh. Jay Kang, who's now at the New York Times previously, I think he was like kind of freelancing for mm -hmm. a while. I think he's the best like living writer in the country. Oh, wow. Uh, he, he's a columnist for the New York Times. His story is kind of about, you know, Asian Americans and why their experience yes. is kind of moving under, and maybe not underreported, but kind of, it stands for a million different things and doesn't stand for anything. So mm. it just a really, really fascinating book. I think Jay is like literally the best writer alive oh, right now. So I will. Interesting. We might, um, this book, it just came out. It just came out in November. And we have a BAM book jam, we call it, in my agency. So I'm gonna, we're going to hit this person up. We always love our authors who are reporters, too. I love the title here on the publisher summary, A Riveting Blend of Family History and Original Reportage That Explores and Reimagines Asian American Identity in a Black and White World. Name one of the so best books of the year good. in NPR. Yeah, it was wow. fantastic. And I listened to Jay's podcast, too, which wow. is also great. Okay. Time to say goodbye. Oh. Fantastic. Do you know Jay personally? Should I hit you up so we can? No, no, I do okay. not. I, don't, I was going to say. Know any of them. Okay. I'm going to add this to I am my a fan. card. I'm a huge fan. Okay. Fan. When we get it scheduled, I'll invite you to our chat that we have with the authors once a month or once a quarter after we read the book. I'm sending sure, it to will, you right I will now. Say the same thing I'm saying here, which is a great book. Oh, I love it. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I don't think so. I think that's, you that's know, I read list. New York Mag and the New Yorker and I try to read everything, but I usually can't. Oh, I know. That's the problem with today. I also feel that what a, t I mean, I don't know. I'm a kid from late 80s. So I don't know what, you know, there was very limited, limited things back then, but it's like, there's so much great content visually, TV, all the things right now. How do you keep, it's hard. It's hard. I love it. What a joy to be alive right now for storytelling. <laughs> yes, it is fun. I feel very lucky and I've worked in a lot of different newsrooms and I just, I feel very lucky to get to do this. It is absolutely a privilege. And I try to think of, I try to remind myself that every day. Mm -hmm. You might've just teed up then the last question for today, Ryan, which is what do you think the future of journalism looks like? That's a good question. I guess, I don't know. Uh, everyone has already said newsletters. Yeah. That's kind of cliche considering our work at Morning Bro. Yes. I don't know what the future of journalism is. I'm not super optimistic considering the backbone of journalism and the place that the New York Times, the Washington Post hired from was relatively local journalism outlets, which no longer exist in the same way. So I'm not super optimistic there. Uh, I used to work at, I was a fellow at the Center for Public Integrity, which mm. was a non profit investigative newsroom run obviously by, you know, it was a nonprofit. So it was all grants, you know, un 
unfortunately, it seems like the future of journalism is going to be something more akin to a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. I hope that's in like 50 years or 100 years. Although I think mm. that's like not, yeah, unfortunately. It's feeling a little um, off. But, mm. you know, I, uh, CBS and NBC, they're always going to be around. The New York Times is always going to be the greatest paper yep. in the world. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of <laughs> yeah. not optimistic for the small players, but it seems like everyone else is going to do okay. Yeah. Fingers crossed. It's yet to see. Yet to see. But at least you're writing for a very popular newsletter right now that I hope everyone listening to is going to sign up for because it is fun and lighter and has a twist and has context and it is a great newsletter. So Ryan, thanks for, thank you so yeah, much. you are welcome. Thank you for doing this with us today too. It's been just a joy way to kick off the new year, drinking our teas and coffees and hopefully I'll be to New York soon again. I'm looking yeah. Thank it. you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, marketing brew subscribe. I promise you there will at least be five jokes and there will be even better stories. So just please. I, I think we have a, a really fun time and it's a fun read. There you go. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Coffee with the Journalist featuring Ryan Barwick from Morning Brew. If you enjoy listening to our show, make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. And if you have a moment, please leave us a review to share your thoughts about the show and today's guest. To learn more about the latest tools on OnePitch and to subscribe to our weekly podcast newsletter, head to our website at onepitch.co. We'll see you all next week with a brand new guest and even more insights about the journalists you want to learn more about. Until then, start great stories.